Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hi, it's me, Katie. Welcome back to Still Spotlight. Recently on TikTok, I've been getting a ton of videos on my For You page that are like K-pop moments that altered my brain chemistry, pop culture moments that live in my mind rent-free. And I thought it'd be cool to take inspo from that, but do it with fashion moments that impacted my personal style. When I sat down to make this list, I soon realized that pretty much everything is either from childhood or from about the last five years. So definitely a big gaping hole in between. And obviously that doesn't mean that things weren't influencing me throughout that period but it just didn't really have a long-lasting impact more so because I was just trying to fit in with whatever was going at the time I actually want to start with the most recent and obvious influence like I said my style has been pretty consistent for about the last five years but that doesn't mean that I'm not constantly trying to build and level up and a moment that definitely allowed me to do so was my discovery and love for Nana and then following just Ayazawa's work in general honestly it's hard to find someone who loves this series and didn't have it impact the way they dress in some way or another, whether it was when it was originally released or its resurgence in the last few years. Obviously, the designs drawn by Ayazawa are inspired by J Fashion at the time, and although she's probably most known for her more punk aesthetic, she actually showcases various styles throughout her works. Despite the sometimes polarizing aesthetics featured in the one panel, I think what ties them together is the creative expression and the attention to detail, which I think anyone can take inspiration from no matter what their personal style might be. For me it really helped with improving my accessory game and just thinking of the overall bigger picture like including hairstyles to add more to the outfit. I have two of her illustration books I would love to complete the collection eventually but I find myself constantly flicking through these whenever I need a spark of inspiration. Of course another way and probably easier way to get inspo is to actually watch the anime series and I was so excited when Netflix announced that they'd be adding it to more libraries and then so disappointed when Australia wasn't one of them but fear not because of course today's video sponsor has us covered award-winning VPN Surfshark. With Surfshark I'm able to quickly and easily change my location settings and then instantly have access to a ton of content that's not usually available in my region. For example at the moment I'm switching over to Germany in order to watch Nana they have it with English subtitles. It's so nice to be able to stream it in top-notch quality and I'm making Sam watch it for the very first time. And Surfshark actually offer unlimited devices under just one account so everyone can find the content that suits them best whilst also ensuring their safety while browsing online. They do this through various methods, including adding an extra layer of protection whilst using public Wi-Fi, or preventing companies and bots from tracking your personal activity amongst others. You can use my code SPOTLIGHT for 85% off plus three extra months for free until the end of this year. And since Surfshark offer a 30 day money back guarantee, you can try it all risk free via the link on screen and down below in the description box. And once again, just a huge thank you to Surfshark for supporting my channel throughout 2022. We all knew it was coming because they legit had me hooked from the very first ad, the moment they uttered the words passion for fashion, I was there. I was at Big W begging for the new release. Of course, I'm talking about Brad Stoll's. They have and will always be my icons. They've influenced my style in many ways, but the first most simple way is just my love for platform shoes. I'd say over the last eight years, it has been truly rare for me to purchase a pair that doesn't have a platform, and I really don't see that changing anytime soon. The other big impact they've had is the concept of theme dressing. I'm definitely one of those people who gets easily overwhelmed when choosing out an outfit, but if you go in with a clear theme in mind, I think that it's easier and also a lot more fun. So you kind of get to think about what mood you're in today and thus how you want to express that through what you're choosing to wear. That might sound kind of whatever to some people, but for me, I really struggle with expressing myself with words. I know that might sound hard to believe because I get on here and babble like a crazy person, but one of the reasons I started this channel as well is because I have such a hard time commuting communicating with people in real life. So that's why choosing an outfit that expresses myself really means a lot to me. As you probably know, I've done a full dedicated Bratz inspired video. So I was kind of going back and forth on which collection I'd want to revisit. But then I was like, who am I kidding? There is not a collection I reference more often, the Wintertime Wonderland. Thus, this outfit was created. 
all of the girls looks are super adorable and easy to take inspo from but since I actually own Jade's version I thought that's where I'd take my main inspo. I love that baby blue shade and because of her I love teaming it with red. I'm not so sure I'm pulling off this style of hat specifically teamed with the turtleneck but you know what? Us wig jawline girlies have to unite, okay? We can wear what we want. Also the irony that these boots don't really have a platform is not lost on me but they still have the chunkiness, okay? So it makes up for it. I guess in a similar sort of vein, I also enjoy dressing up dolls online as well. The hours I must have clocked on Star Doll, oh my god. I also love the actual doll franchises that got in on the action as well. In my brain as a kid, Bratz absolutely killed Barbie and my scene when it came to physical dolls, but in the online world, the my scene girlies were unbeatable. Like their outfits actually always looked really cute. I remember also playing the Polly Pocket ones. They were a little bit more hit and miss. And I have no idea how popular these were, but if anyone remembers Diva Stars, I thought they were so cool, but looking back, low-key terrifying to be honest. Awesome. Oh, jump scare. And when I went to play this game yesterday, I was instantly reminded of my biggest pet peeve, and that was that the shoes didn't match any of the outfits. Like they gave you the cutest top bottom options, and then the shoes were just trash every single time. Literally, the colors didn't go at all. Perhaps my love for matchy matchy outfits actually came from my pure anger when playing this game as a kid. I don't even know why, but as a kid, I used to watch reruns of The Nanny a lot. TV One just always had it on. And I don't think I realized at the time, but subconsciously, I think Fran Fine had a big influence on my style. She had color coordination, matching sets, vests, mini skirts, stockings, all things that are heavily featured in my wardrobe today. But perhaps the thing that actually inspired me the most was her confidence when it came to wearing what she loved. Looking back, it's kind of crazy that they tried to paint the picture of her being like the tacky, unfashionable one, when realistically, she was literally wearing designer straight from the runway. I'm sorry, but you can't tell me this isn't serving Fran Fine realness. And if you do, I'm convinced you just have never watched the show because if you picture this outfit with her face and hair, Hello! And yes, I will admit this isn't necessarily a go-to outfit that you would expect to see on my channel on a regular basis, but if you break it down and style each of the items individually, then yes, definitely see the influence. And also this would probably serve as a pretty good reminder that if you're ever trying to insult my style, the word tacky is just useless on me, okay? This is what I grew up idolizing. Just a real quick switch up on styling because I thought this was the perfect example of like the cross section of three of my ultimate inspirations. Nana, The Nanny, and also Clueless, which is also an example of why you don't have to be so copy and paste with every style inspiration. You can kind of blend them together and then you might come up with your own personal style along the way, although I am feeling kind of like I'm at the circus in this one. <laughs> of course, animated shows have always had me in a chokehold and that's no surprise to you if you've been on this channel. There are character lookbooks for days, whether that's Totally Spies, the Barbie movies, the Powerpuff Girls, Winx Club. I mean, look at the room I'm in. Clearly these shows sparked my love for pops of color and how to combine them in fun ways. I'd say the one I still take the most inspo from today is Sailor Moon. Overall, I think that the style is very wearable and quite timeless. I mean, I'm dressed very simply today but the details on this blouse I think still reminiscent of something you would see in the anime with the little puff sleeves and the exaggerated collar. I was starting to feel kind of silly like I was just rehashing things that I'd already said but obviously if I'm talking about things that have inspired me for a long time chances are you've heard me talk about them before. So in case you couldn't already tell no I didn't end up doing another Sailor Moon look I still stand by the lookbook I've already done on that. Instead I've decided to tackle another show slash comic book along the same magical girl theme which I have gotten a couple of requests for this which always makes me really excited because the only reason I haven't done a full dedicated video is because I'm not too sure how many people actually remember it but if enough people want one then let me know because honestly the outfits are even better than what I remembered so this is just a little something I came up with quickly despite being I believe an Italian comic the outfits are giving very 2000s J fashion but to me at least everything still feels really casual and wearable it's more so just those little playful elements they bring into it for example the skirt over pants honestly this is so cute I am just mad I can't wear it out at the moment even in air conditioning it would just be dumb for me to up like this so it will have to be archived and brought back out come autumn time.
I feel like over the last few years, the fashion community on YouTube has just exploded and in large part, I would say that is thanks to Ashley Best Dressed's influence. But before that, it was very much the land of the beauty guru. There was only a few people really focusing solely on fashion and Clothes Encounters was definitely one of them and 100% guarantee you, without her, I never would have started my channel. You can 100% see her influence over me in my early videos, but she was my original introduction into the world of K-fashion. I remember doing my first purchase from Style Nanda because of her. And also kind of close encounters, but also heavily the fashion citizen is the reason I first started thrifting. Nowadays, there's a lot of runway shows I like to look back on for inspiration from the 90s, early 2000s, and some more recent collections that seemingly just live rent free on my Pinterest homepage. But I still remember the first year I was trying to get more into runway shows on style.com. And specifically, there was this Louis Vuitton collection from when Marc Jacobs was still there I'm pretty sure and I was just obsessed with it and honestly looking back at it now um no idea why <laughs> this honestly has lived in my brain for the longest time and apparently the memory that I had stored away was not even accurate because this is not what I had up here okay <laughs> but for context at the time I was like oh I want to be a fashion designer when I grow up and apparently I was also obsessed with Gossip Girl hence the Jenny Humphrey in me but also I feel like this collection is very Serena Vanderwoodson legit like the only thing my memory had truly looked in were the bunny ear bows which honestly is still a slave. I've mentioned my introduction to K-fashion but of course I still have to talk about the world of K-pop and how it opened my eyes to styling. I feel like you can actually see a really big shift on my channel even. The turning point is 2018. I think one of the reasons it resonated with me so much originally is because it does kind of combine a lot of the things I loved as a kid but just turned up to the max. Like every comeback is its own little fantasy world. I love theme dressing but also the fact that you can just turn around and completely reinvent yourself the next time around. Red Velvet, I'm looking at you. So that's what drew me in, but what I took away instantly was that I needed to learn how to layer and accessorize. And don't get me wrong, that did take time. Even if you wrapped your head around how to accessorize, in actuality, building up the accessory options in your wardrobe isn't gonna happen overnight. But taking that time to collect accessories that you really love and align with your style, I think is so worth it in the end. And it almost helps create like a signature to your outfits because for me at least, I find that they become my most worn items. The options truly are endless. I mean, for this year alone, there's so many amazing styles we could take inspo from. But for the purpose of this video, it felt like I needed to go back to when I first got into K-pop and I cannot believe I've never done an inspired outfit for this but Triple H Retro Future of course BTS is what first got me into K-pop but almost immediately after that it was Hyuna and she was in her Triple H era. The styling for all three members was very elegant but still quirky and somewhat of an 80s influence. Just very different from anything else I had seen and still to this day I don't think anyone's done it to the same extent. So rather than doing a direct recreation I decided to go with what I would style Hyuna in if in some magical dream fantasy land we got one last stage performance. I took into consideration their use of sheer blouses, micro shorts, a little bit of sparkle, and of course the beret. It seems silly, but I do wish I had a Chanel brooch instead. There's just something about it that completes this sort of aesthetic in my mind. But alas, even secondhand, they cost a small fortune. So I've already spoken about how 2018 was a bit of a turning point. I don't think it was just because I got into K-pop, but it was also the first time that I've gone on a big overseas trip. I got to go to Japan and I just fell in love with the shopping options there. It was so different than what I was used to. Um, at the time, for reference, I was very much trying to fit into like the typical Australian influencer, hence why I had the most horrendous orange fake tan and also really trying to go into like the more bohemian 70s inspired festival outfits despite the fact that still to this day I've never been to a festival and don't get it twisted because yes in the general public it was still very uniformed over there as well just in a different way than it is here but it was specifically more so the shops it was just really cool to have access to the sort of things that I had been liking for a while but not actually trying out for myself I don't know I feel like I can't explain it properly it was more so a feeling 
feeling that I had that kind of helped me switch my mindset when it came to having the confidence to wear the things that I always wanted to. And the items that I purchased on that holiday and the second time I went there as well are things that I still frequently wear and honestly am never going to get rid of. Although not my most reworn item, I think these jeans are actually my favourite Japan pickup simply because they are a collaboration piece between two iconic Japanese brands ex-girl and hysteric glamour. I don't know, they just feel like the sort of thing you would see on TikTok, someone making a video about, oh my god, this amazing find on Makari Japan, but no. I was actually there in person when they were released in store. Definitely the sort of thing I will be holding on to and one day be a hand-me-down to kids or nieces, whatever. I'm sure I'm still missing some really obvious ones, but when I first thought of this concept, these are the ones that just instantly popped into my head. I'd love to hear from you guys too, though, on what fashion moments continue to live rent-free in your mind. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Surfshark, of course. All the links down below in the description box, and hopefully I see you all really, really soon. Bye!